Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first episode of Fuck the Documentary, inspired by Twitter user at MochaCola02. I will leave that in the description. I will leave a link directly to their profile. Anyway, for this first episode, what we are going to do is we're going to read through the Wikipedia article for the word fuck. So, fuck, from https colon slash slash en dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash fuck. <clears throat> fuck, from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. This article is about the English language word. For other uses, see fuck disambiguation. Uh, disambiguation. Fuck is a profane English word, which often refers to the act of sexual intercourse, but is also commonly used as an intensifier or to denote disdain, while its origin is obscure. It is originally considered to be the first a, to be first attested to around 1475. It's modern in modern usage, the term fuck and its derivatives, such as fucker and fucking, can be used as a noun, a verb, an adjective, an interjection, or an adverb. There are many common phrases that employ the word as well as compounds that incorporate it, such as motherfucker, fuckwit, fuckup, and fucka, and fucknut. The context will be offensiveness, entomology, etymology, German cognates, and false etymologies, grammar, early usage, rise of modern usage, modern usage, examples of more recent usage, Use in politics, use in marketing, brand names, holy fuck, f-bomb, censorship, common alternatives, see also, references, further reading, and external links. Obviously, some of those we will not be following today on our journey of fuck. So to begin, we will view what Wikipedia cites as offensiveness. The word is considered obscene, but is most commonly used in many informal and familiar situations. While it is unclear, the word has always been considered vulgar. Hold on. Let me restart that line. I'm very sorry. By the way, this is going in uncut because I'm lazy and I don't have Sony Vegas. It is unclear whether the word has always been considered vulgar, or, if not, when it first came to be used to describe often an extremely angry, hostile, or belligerent manner, unpleasant circumstances, or people in an intentionally offensive way, such as in the term motherfucker. One of its more common usages in some parts of the English-speaking world. Some English-speaking countries censor it on television and radio. Andrea Millwood Hargrave's 2000 study of the attitudes of the British public found that fuck was considered the third most severe profanity and its derivative, motherfucker, the second. Cunt was considered the most severe. Nevertheless, the, wor the word has become increasingly less vulgar and more publicly acceptable. An example of the diphemism dif dif treadmill, wherein former vulgarities become inoffensive and commonplace. According to linguist Pamela Hobbs, quote, Notwithstanding its increasing public use, enduring cultural models that inform our beliefs about the nature of sexuality and sexual acts, preserve its status as a vile utterance that continues to inspire moral outrage. End quote. Hobbes considers users rather than usage of the word. 
and subdivides and subdivides users into non-users for whom the word belongs to a set of taboo words and the utterance of which constitutes an affront and any use of the word regardless of its form verb adjective adverb etc or meaning literal or metaphorical invokes the core sexual meanings and associated sexual imagery that motivate the taboo and users for whom quote metaphorical uses of the word fuck no more evoke images of sexual intercourse than a 10 year old's my mom will kill me if she finds out evokes images of murder end quote so that the quote criteria of taboo are missing end quote because of increasing usage in the public forum in 2005 the word was included for the first time as one of three vulgarities in the canadian press's canadian press caps and spelling guide Journalists were advised to refrain from censoring the word, but use it sparingly and only when its inclusion was essential to the story. Etymology The Oxford English Dictionary states that the ultimate etymology is uncertain, but the word is probably cognate with a number of journeyman words with meanings involved involving striking rubbing and having sex or is derivative of the old french word that meant to fuck german cognates the word has probable cognates in other germanic languages such as german ficken to fuck dutch Fokken, to breed, to beget. Dialectical Norwegian, Fuka, to copulate. And Dialectical Swedish, Faka, to strike, to copulate. And Fok, penis. This points to a possible etymology where common Germanic, Fuck, comes from Indo-European root not meaning uh, uh, comes from an Indo-European root meaning to strike cognate with non-Germanic words such as Latin pugno I fight or pugnus fist by application of Grimm's law the hypothetical root has the form pug the there is a theory that fuck is most likely derived from Flemish, German, or Dutch roots, and it's probably not derived from an Old English root. False etymologies. One reason the word fuck is so hard to trace etymolog etymologically is that it was used far more extensively in common speech than easily traceable written forms. Several urban legends advance false etymologies that declare the word to be an acronym. One of these urban languages is that the word fuck came from Irish law. If a couple was caught committing adultery, then the two would be punished for unlawful carnal knowledge in the nude with fucking written on the stocks to above to denote the crime a variant myth alleges church clerks to have recorded the crime of forbidden use of carnal knowledge yet another is that of a royal permission granted in the middle ages the black death and scarcity of uncontaminated resources drove towns to using both human interactions and population growth 
supposedly. Many towns required permission to inter intermingle or to make babies. Hence, no couple could do either without royal permission, usually from a local magistrate or lord, which required placing a sign visible from the road saying that fornicating under consent of king, which was later shortened to fuck. This story is hard to document and has persisted in oral and literary traditions for many years, but has been proven false. A false etymology first made popular on the radio show Car Talk says the phrase fuck you derives from pluck you in connection with a myth regarding the V sign. The myth states that English archers believed that those who were captured by the French had their index and middle fingers cut off so that they could no longer operate their longbows, and that the V sign was used by uncaptured and victorious archers in a display of defiance against the French. In addition, the phrase fuck you to the myth uh, to the myth came when it claimed that the English yelled that they could still pluck you, you would being the preferred material for longbows at the time. A phrase that evolved into the modern fuck you. In any event, the word fuck has been in use far too long for some of these supposed origins to be possible, since no acronym was ever recorded before the 1960s according to the lexicographical work, the F word, which claims, uh, such claims create a best, at best, a so-called backronym, in quotes. Grammar. Fuck has a very flexible role in English grammar, including use as both a transitive and intransitive verb, and as an adjective, adverb, and noun. It can be used as an interjection and a grammatical ejaculation. Linguist Geoffrey Hughes found eight distinct usages for the English curse words, and fuck can apply to each. For example, it fits in the curse sense. Example, fuck you. As well as the personal sense. Example, you fucker. Its vulgarity also contributes to its mostly figurative sense, though the word itself is used in its literal sense to refer to sexual intercourse, its most common usages are figurative, to indicate the speaker's strong sentiment and to offend or shock the listener. Early usage. In 2015, Dr. Paul Booth argued he had found, quote, possibly the earliest known use of the word fuck that clearly has a sexual connotation, end quote, colon. In English court records of 1310 to 11, a man local to Chester is referred to as Hold on one moment while I pronounce this, because I may butcher it. Roger, fuck by the navel, probably a nickname. Quote, either this refers to an inexperienced copulator referring to somebody trying to have sex with the navel, or it's a rather extravagant explanation for a dimwit, someone who is so stupid 
they think that this is the way to have sex, end quote, says Booth. An earlier name, that of John Le Fucker, recorded in 1278, has been subject to debate, but it's thought by many um, philo philologists to have some separate and non-sexual origin. Otherwise, the usually accepted first occurrence of the word is found in code in a poem in a mixture of Latin and English composed in the 15th century. The poem, which satirizes the Carmelite Friars of Cambridge, England, takes its title Fen Lis. From the first words in its opening line, Fen, Fliss, and Freris, translated to Fleas, Flies, and Friars. The line that contains fuck reads, None, none sunt in coli, quae, weird word spelled G X D D B O V. Next word, XXKXZT, PG, IFMK, deciphering the phrase, the random gibberish I just said, here by replacing each letter by the previous letter in alphabetical order, as the English alphabet was then, yields the macaronic non sunt inculi. Quae fucant vivis of heli, which translated means they are not in heaven because they fuck the women of Eli. The phrase was probably encoded because it accused monks of breaking their vows of celibacy. It is uncertain to what extent the word fuck was considered acceptable at the time. The stem of fuckant is an English word used as Latin. English medieval Latin has many examples of writers using English words when they did not know the Latin word. Workmanus is an example. In the Middle English, in the Middle English of this poem, the term Wife is still generically is still used generically for woman. Citation needed. William Dunbar's fifteen oh three poem Brash of Wowing includes the lines Yet be his Ferris he walled how fuck it Ye break ye brick my heart my bony ain. Two, thirteen to fourteen. The oldest occurrence of the word in adjectival form, which implies use of the verb, in English comes from the margins of fifth of a fifteen twenty eight manuscript copy of Cicero's De Officius, a monk had scrawled in the margin notes, fucking abbot. Whether the monk meant the word literally to accuse abbot of questionable monastic morals, or whether he used it as, used it, quote, as an intensifier to convey his extreme dismay, end quote, is unclear. Note, John Florio's 1598 Italian English Dictionary, A World of Words, includes the term, along with several now archaic but then vulgar synonyms in its definition. Fatere, to jape, to sard, to fuck, to swive, to occupy. 
of these, occupy and jape still survive as verbs, though with less profane meanings, while sard was a descendant of the Anglo-Saxon ver verb sordan, or things I cannot pronounce, to copulate, and swive had derived from earlier swifon, to resolve, an example, to swivel, compare modern-day screw. As late as the 18th century, the verb occupy was seldom used in print because it carried sexual overtones. A 1790 poem by St. George Tucker has a father upset with his bookish son say, quote, I'd not give a fuck for all you've read, end quote. Originally printed as, quote, I'd not give blank for all you've read, end quote. Scholars agree that the words a fuck were removed, making the poem the first instance of the now common phrase, I don't give a fuck. Farmer and Henley's 1893 Dictionary of Slang notes both adverbial and adjectival forms of fuck as similar to but more violent than bloody and indicating extreme insult, respectively. Rise of Modern Usage Though it appeared in English lexico uh, lexicographer John Ashes, John Ashes' 1775 A New and Complete Dictionary, listed as low and vulgar, and appearing with several definitions, fuck did not appear in, a widely consulted dic in any widely consulted dictionary of the English language from 1795 to 1965. Its first appearance in the Oxford English Dictionary, along with the word cunt, was in 1972. The variant feck appeared in the English Dialect Dictionary, compiled by Joseph Wright in 1900. Modern Usage this section needs additional citations for verification. Please help improve this article by adding citations to reliable sources. Unsourced material may be challenged and, and removed. Find sources, fuck, news, newspapers, books. Scholar J.S. Tor, December, 14, uh, December 2014. Learn how and when to remove this template message. The modern usage and flexibility of fuck was established in the mid to late 19th century and has been fairly stable since. Most literally, to fuck is to have sex, but it is also used as a more general expletive or intensifier. Insertion of the trochaic word fucking can also be used as an exercise for diagnosing the cadence of an English language word. This is the use of fuck, or more specifically fucking as an infix, or more properly a Tmesis. C. Expletive in fixation. For example, the word in fucking credible sounds acceptable to the English ear and is in fairly common use, while incred fuckingable would sound very clumsy.
though depending on the context, it might be perceived as a humorous improvisation of the word. Abso-fucking-lutely and motherfucking are also common uses of fuck as an affix. While neither diffamistic nor connected to sexual connotations of the word, even the vacuous usages are considered offensive and gratuitous, and censored in some media. For example, none of your fucking business. Shut the fuck up. A common insult is get fucked, which is which in a less offensive uh, which in a less offensive context would translate as get stuffed. The word is in one of the few that has colloquial colloquial usage as a verb, adverb, adjective, conjunction, interjunction, noun, or pronoun. The word fuck is a component of many acronyms, some of which, like snafu or fubar, date as far back as World War II. MILF and variations of the first letter are widely seen in pornographic contexts. Many more recent coinages, such as the shorthand WTF or what the fuck, STFU or shut the fuck up, or FML or fuck my life, have been widely extant on the internet, and many count as examples of internet memes. Many acronyms will also have an F or MF to increase emphasis. For example, OMG, oh my god, becomes OMFG, oh my fucking god. Abbreviated versions of the word do not tend to be considered offensive. Although the word proclaimed vulgar, several comedians rely on fuck for comedic routines. George Carlin created several literary works based upon the word. Other comedians who use or have used the word consistently in their routines include Billy Connolly, Dennis Leary, Louis Black, Andrew Dice Clay, Chris Rock, Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, and Sam Kinison. Examples of more recent usage. In 1928, English writer D. H. Lawrence's novel Lady Chatterley's Lover gained notoriety for its frequent use of the words fuck, fucked, f and fucking. The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger featured the use of fuck you in print. First published in the United States in 1951, the novel remains controversial to this day due, in part, to its use of the word starting at number 13 for the most banned books from 1990 to 2000, according to the American Library Association. The first documented use of the word fuck on live British television has been attributed to the theater critic Kenneth Tynan in 1965. Though it has been claimed Irish playwright Brendan Behan used the word on Panorama in 1956, or the man who painted the railings on Stranmillis Embankment alongside the River Lagan in Belfast, who, in 1959, told Ulster TV's Tea Time magazine program Roundabout that his job was fucking boring.
controversy ensued in 1976 when Today host Billy Grundy interviewed the Sex Pistols after guitarist Steve Jones called Grundy a dirty fucker and a fucking rotter. See EMI and the Grundy Incident. Use in Politics Fuck is not widely used in politics, and use of the word by politicians is often produces controversy. Some events include, in 1965, U.S. President Lyndon B. Johnson said to the Greek ambassador Alexandros Matsis when he objected to American plans in Cyprus, fuck your parliament and your constitution. America is an elephant, Cyprus is a flea, Greece is a flea. If these two fellows continue itching the elephant, they may just get whacked by the elephant's trunk. Whacked good. Former British Secretary of State for Defense, Dennis Haley, reported that pen, penultimate High Commissioner of Aden, 1965-1967, Sir Richard Trumbull stated that when the British Empire finally sinks beneath the waves of history, it will leave behind only two memorials. One is the game of association football, and the other is the expression, fuck off. During the 1968 Democratic National Convention, Chicago Mayor Richard Daley became so enraged by a speech from Abraham A. Ribicoff that he shouted, fuck you. Daley would later say, that he was shouting, you flink you, and calling Ribinoff, uh, Ribikoff a faker. On the first night of this same convention, which President Johnson's birthday, which was President Johnson's birthday, a huge crowd of thousands of yippies, hippies, and anti-Vietnam War protesters were famously filmed while simultaneously war roaring, Fuck you, Lyndon Johnson. During debate in February 1971 in the House of Commons of Canada, Canadian Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau mouthed the words, Fuck off, at Conservative MP John Lundrigan while Lundrigan made some comments about unemployment. Afterwards, when asked by a television reporter what he had been thinking, Trudeau famously replied, What is the nature of your thoughts, gentlemen, when you say, Fuddle-duddle, or something like that? Fuddle-duddle consequently became a catchphrase, in Canadian media associated with Trudeau. First accepted modern use in the British House of Commons came in, 18, uh, in 1982 when Reg Race, Labour MP for Wood Green, referred to adver adverts placed in local newsagents by prostitutes which read, Phone them and fuck them. Hansard, the full record of debates printed, fuck them. But even this euphemism was even this euphemism was depreciated. No, deprecated by the speaker George Thomas. Shortly after Tony Blair was elected leader of the Labour Party, the then Labour MP George Galloway told a public meeting, I don't give a fuck what Tony Blair thinks, when questioned about the party's move to the right. In late 2003, the then U.S. presidential candidate, Senator John Kerry, used the word fuck in an interview 
with Rolling Stone, referring to his vote in favor of the resolution authorizing U.S. President George W. Bush to use military vo force in Iraq, Kerry stated, I voted for what I thought was the best for my country, for the country. I did expect Howard Dean to go off to the left and say, I'm against everything. Sure. Did I expect George Bush to fuck it up as badly as he did? I don't think anybody did. End quote. In June 2004, U.S. Vice President Dick Cheney told Democratic Senator Patrick Leahy, Go fuck yourself. Coincidentally, Cheney's outburst occurred on the same day that the Defense of Decency Act was passed in the Senate. In February 2006, Premier of the Australian state of New South Wales, Morris Ayama, while awaiting at the start of a Council of Australian Governments media conference in Canberra, was chatting to Victorian Premier Steve Brax. Not realizing microphones were recording, he said, quote, Today, this fuckwit who's the new CEO of Cross City Tunnel has been saying what controversy? There is no controversy, end quote. The exchange referred to newly appointed CEO of recently opened Cross City Tunnel Toll Road within Sydney. As a quick interjection to these political uses of the word fuck, Wikipedia said that there were not many, and there are, to put it frankly, a fuck ton. So, I find it quite humorous that there are more political uses cited on Wikipedia than general written uses. To continue where I left off, on January 31st, 2007, New York Governor Elliot Spitzer angrily retorted to an Assembly Minority Leader, Jim Tedesco, Listen, I'm a fucking steam- oh, my apologies. Quote, listen, I'm a fucking steamroller, and I'll roll over you and anybody else. End quote. According to the New York Post, Spitzer confirmed the exchange the following day. In 2007, U.S. Senator John Cornyn objected to John McClain's perceived intrusion upon a Senate meeting on immigration, saying, quote, Wait a second here. I've been sitting in here for all of these negotiations, and you just parachute in here on the last day. You're out of line, end quote. McLean, known for his short temper, replied, quote, Fuck you. I know more about this than anyone else in the room, end quote. In April 2007, New Zealand Education Minister Steve Mahare said, Fuck you, to a fellow MP parliamentary question time. During a parliamentary question time, he apologized shortly afterwards. In December 2008, recorded telephone conversations between Illinois Governor Rod, I'm about to butcher, butcher this, Blagojevich, trying to sell an appointment to the Senate seat Bar that Barack Obama resigned after being elected president. In the phone conversation, Blagov Blagojevich said in reference to his power to appoint a new senator, I've got this thing, and it's, quote, my, my apologies, quote, I've got this thing, and it's 
fucking golden. And I'm not, and I'm just not giving it up for fucking nothing. End quote. In the recorded conversations, Blagojevich also referred to Obama as a motherfucker and repeatedly said, fuck him. When speaking of the Obama administration's request that Valery Jarrett be appointed as Obama's replacement, Blagojevich complained, they're not willing to give me anything except appreciation. Fuck them. Blagojevich also said Tribune Company ownership would should be told to fire those fuckers, in reference to the Chicago Tribune's editors critical of him. Oh good, we are almost done. In December of 2009, I'm about to butcher this name as well, Dial Elrian, the lower house of Irish Pol Parliament, Paul Gugardi, responds to heckles from Emmett Stagg with the outburst, with all due, quote, with all due respect, in the most unparliamentary language, Fuck you, Deputy Stagg. Fuck you. End quote. Gogarty immediately withdrew the remarks and later made a personal statement of apology. Reporting of the outburst quickly spread by media and the internet. A subcommittee of Dial's Standing Committee on the procedure and privilege of a 28-page report on the incident. Angus O. Snowdai said, Fuck all, in November 2009, and apologized in Irish. He said, Fucked up, in 2010. Mike Wallace said, Fuck up, in May 2016. And the adjective fucking in July 2016 and 2019. On March 23rd, 2010, U.S. Vice President Joe Biden whispered in Barack Obama's ear, quote, This is a big fucking deal, end quote, when referring to the U.S. Health Care Reform Bill. His words were picked up by microphones and video. On May 3rd, 2010, Canadian Senator Nancy Ruth advised representatives of women's groups to, quote, shut the fuck up, end quote, on access to abortion and in the run-up to the 36th G8 Summit. In late 2012, the then U.S. House Speaker, John Boner, was visiting the White House when he saw then-Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid in the lobby. Boner was under great stress about the impending fiscal cliff, and Reid had also accused him of running a dictatorship in the House. Boner saw Harry Reid pointed his finger at him, and told him, quote, go fuck yourself, end quote. Reed replied by saying, quote, what are you talking about, end quote. Boner then repeated what he told him and left. In late 2016, Rodrigo Duderte reacted to the European Parliament's criticism over the prevalence of unsolved extrajudicial killings incurred in his, quote, war on drugs, end quote, which he lashed out at EU politicians, singling out those from Britain and France, calling them hypocrites and accusing them of being responsible for the deaths of thousands caused by their ancestors during the colonial period. A 
upon making an obscene hand gesture. Duterte stated that he told EU politicians, quote, When I read the EU condemnation, I told them, fuck you. You are only doing it to atone for your own sins, end quote. And, quote, they do not want a safe Philippines. They want it ruled by cr criminals. Oh, well, I'm sorry. That is your idiotic view, end quote. Duterte also, Duterte also said, in response for growing international criticism, the, quote, EU now has the gall to condemn me. I repeat it, fuck you, end quote. Two left. On June 10th, 2018, Robert De Niro sparked controversy during the 72nd Tony Awards as he cursed United States President Donald Trump with the word during the live broadcast. He stated with the sentence, quote, I'm going to say one thing. Fuck Trump. End quote. He clenched his two fists in the air and ended his remarks by saying, quote, It's no longer down with Trump. It's fuck Trump. End quote. He received a standing ovation from the audience, which was mostly celebrities. Final one. There's... There's actually two. Okay. So final two. On August 5th, 2019, Beto O'Rourke, after learning of a mass shooting in his hometown of El Paso, Texas, stated, quote, He's been calling Mexican immigrants rapists and criminals. I don't know, like, members of the press. What the fuck? End quote. Referring to Donald Trump when he asked for his reaction to the shooting. During the George W. Bush presidency, a vehicular bumper sticker with the words, Buck Fush, gained some popularity in the U.S. Use in Marketing In April 1997, clothing retailer French Connection began branding their work, their clothes FCUK, usually written in lowercase, stating it was an acronym for French Connection United Kingdom. Its similarity to the word fuck caused controversy. French Connection produced a range of t-shirts with messages such as FCUK this, hot as FCUK, mile high FCUK, FCUK me, etc. In 2009, the European Union's OHIM trademarks agency disallowed a German brewery to market a beer called fucking hell. They sued, and on the 26th of March, 2010, got permission to market the beer. They argued it is actually named after the, Australia, the Austrian village of fucking, and the German term for light beer, hell, which is simply the word for light in color. Iancu v. Brunetti is a United States Supreme Court case in which the owner of the clothing brand F-U-C-T, supposedly standing for Friends You, the Letter, Can't Trust, sued the Patent and Trademark Office, which refused to trademark the name for being scandalous under the Lanham Act. The Supreme Court ruled in 2019 that a provision in 15 U.S.C. 1052A of the Act 
denying registration to trademarks seen as consisting of immoral or scandalous matter was an unconstitutional re re unconstitutional restriction of applicants freedom of speech brand names the word fuck has been used in a number of brand names generally based on common compounds although these brands are in the aggressive non-mainstream genres of punk and metal others fall into the categories of more accessible forms of electronic rock and pop. Holy fuck redirects. Holy fuck redirects here. For other uses, see holy fuck. Disambiguation. Holy fuck is an example of liturgical profanity used in interjectionally to express anger, contempt, disgust, or amazement, usually vulgar. F-bomb. The term dropping an F-bomb usually refers to the unanticipated use of the word fuck in an unexpected setting, such as public media, a play on the nickname for the hydrogen bomb, the H-bomb, and the shock value that using the word fuck in discourse carries. The term was first reported in a newspaper, Newsday, in 1988, when Hall of Fame, bas when Hall of Fame baseball catcher Gary Carter used it. In 2012, it was listed for the first time in the mainstream Merriam-Webster's Col Collegiate Dictionary. Two more major sections to go. Censorship. In the United States, the word is frequently edited out of music and films when broadcast on TV, such as in the film The Big Lebowski, when John Goodman's character repeatedly yells, This is what happens when you fuck a stranger in the ass. It was censored on, te on television as, This is what happens when you find a stranger in the Alps. Still, in 1971, the U.S. Supreme Court decided that the public display of fuck is protected under the First and Fourteenth Amendments and cannot be made a criminal offense. In 1968, Paul Robert Cohen set, had been convicted of disturbing the peace when wearing a jacket with a slogan titled, Fuck the Draft, in a reference to conscription in the Vietnam War. The conviction was upheld by the Court of Appeals and overturned by the Supreme Court in Cohen v. California, 403 U.S. 15, 1971. Citation needed. Common Alternatives Main Article, Minced Oath In conversation or writing, reference to or use of the word fuck may be replaced uh, by any of many alternative words or phrases, including the F word or the F bomb, a play on A bomb and H bomb, or simply F or F, as in what the F, or you effing tool. Also, there are many commonly used substitutes, such as flipping, frigging, freaking, freaking, feck, fudge, flaming, or any of a number of similarly sounding nonsense words. In print, there are alternatives such as 
f star star star, f dash dash k, etc. Or a string of non alphanumeric characters. For example, at dollar sign hashtag star percent. And similar, especially favored in, and similar, especially favored in comic books. A replacement word used on the internet is FSCK, derived from the name of the Unix file system checking utility. In Battlestar Galactica, the boulderized form FRAC, spelt F-R-A-K in the reimagined 2003 version, was used as a substitute for fuck. The word was sometimes jokingly used as a curse by fans. Similarly, the word frel is used as a substitute on the TV show Farscape, and Dr. Elliot Reed, played by Sarah Chalk, has frequently used the substitute frick on the TV show Scrubs. STU Stu Brody, a recurring character on Curb Your Enthusiasm, played by Don Stark, is teased by Larry David for constantly using the substitute freak. Ah, uh, quote, ah, uh, freak you, end quote. And that concludes the first episode of Fuck, the documentary. Let me know what you all think, and have a wonderful day. Peace out.